I have to leave at uh, twelve twenty-five. By the way, so twelve twenty-five. Or uh, two, uh, that's two twenty-five. Okay, minutes. so probably we'll just have time to do weird things. Yeah. I got I got a little something you and me I and you. Can chew on well, we'll go. Well, yeah, we'll run. We'll run we'll the. Just, we'll run the do. double dragon. And it'll be good because if Brian's not here, then we don't have to worry about making it a whole thing. We can just be like. Yeah. Save the show. Hey. We sa- Hello, everybody. We saved hey. the show. We're going to start weird things here in just a minute. What's popping, fam? What's everybody doing? They should say, what's popping fresh? Pop- oh, because like popping fresh. The Is that Pillsbury? Yeah. Popping fresh. Is that too... Com- is that too... Cons- is that... I don't even think anybody right. knows that anymore. I think you might be a real boomer with that. What? Really? Yeah. I don't think if you just put... If you put right now "poppin' fresh" just yeah. on Twitter, I'm gonna go to Twitter.com. Just say "poppin' fresh," and and just see if people are interacting with you in a way that like knows that it's the Pillsbury Doughboy. Then, okay, I'm gonna type from the Great Night account "poppin' fresh" question mark. Yeah, and we'll find out at the end of the stream if anybody replies, or if the replies, yeah, wh- where what how on brand are. they are. We're, we're really looking for hoo-hoos. We're looking for hoo-hoos. We're looking for hoo-hoos. Damn. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. We'll get there in a minute. It's just the three of us today. Yeah, man. Finally, the way that God intended. I mean, if you want a rap name, Poppin' Fresh. Poppin' Fresh is pretty good. There we go. Pop With and fresh. I, I also just, I love the idea of, of the third the third rapper on a song. <laughs> like that it's like Jay-Z featuring T.I. And, and Pop and Fresh. Pop and Fresh. Like It's the new class. He's, he's the new 2022 Woo-hoo, class. Everybody <laughs> got some new beats. Although although, by the way, uh uh a spoiler for my pick, but Ooh. uh uh the Kanye doc rules, if you oh, are yeah? interested in that time period or him specifically. Uh, G genius. Genius. Yeah. Uh but uh it, it specifically is a is a really interesting window into the world of early aughts music industry and rap music industry of how like the spots that everybody was fighting for and everything. So this is only during that crossover hit time. This is not up it's, to current day. It is a trilogy. Yeah. The first two uh, follow him from like Chicago to New York. And then uh, the second one is about the 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 college dropout actually like getting released and and all that. Oh, nice. Uh, and then the third one, which is yet to release, is uh, they basically it's like and now the rest, mm. and they show everything f- from George Bush doesn't care about black people to I'm gonna let you finish to yeah. running for president. That's a lot to fit into. A third part. It seems like a lot. To what, cover. what I guess is because this guy followed him from like he was like a documentarian for him, like from co- from uh, Chicago. What I guess is that he got part he was two. he was called when things were popping off or or wanted to come and shoot him when things were popping off. And and that's what we're going to get is kind of the, the ins and outs of it. Hmm. Yeah, very cool. Alrighty, are you guys? Uh, I think I'm ready to do weird things. You guys ready to do weird things? You, you're, you recorded all that, right, Bryce? Yes. Yeah. yeah we'll put that. Just pop that in the back, just, so we don't have to hear me talk about Kanye <laughs> twice. <laughs> I have more questions about. It, I'm sure. All right. Well, um, uh, if you're ready to go, Andrew. I'm ready. Okay. Then I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, that's me. Gentlemen, start off with a question. What's the weirdest thing you've seen on Mars? Ooh, the weirdest thing on Mars. Uh, Besides from Dr. Manhattan's piece. (laughs) Is the Great Storm? That's not on Mars, is it? No, that's on Jupiter, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, but they do get they do get seasonal like dust storms on Mars that do change the appearance of the surface. I guess technically it would be the rover. The rover would be the weirdest, the most weird thingsy thing I've seen on Mars. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, okay. Uh, any alien experience you've had, Justin? No, I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, beyond my snarky comment about Watchmen, I, I don't. I don't know <laughs> if um, uh, uh, I, I necessarily would be able to say the weirdest thing because I, I, I do not have a, a working enough knowledge of the geography of Mars. Yeah. 
But I would suspect that, well, that if, if, yeah, if, if they showed, yeah, I don't know, like some caves or, or, or mountains or something like that, like I'm sure that there's some you know, oh, like a lava flow. Yeah, stuff that you can. Well, yeah, we've seen, we've seen some neat stuff in the past. Uh, we've seen from the, the orbital surveillance, we've seen um, things like, you know, long things that look like caverns and stuff, like riles and stuff, or, you know, lava tubes have collapsed and the entrances to what could be under, under you know, could be caverns and stuff there. There's some cool things that seem to be kind of seasonal that may be like CO2 geysers and stuff that we've never seen up close, but we have images that look like they create these really kind of neat formations and things that just feel alien and exotic. Mm. The latest cool thing is the Martian flower. Flower? I'm sorry. Which is something that the what? Curiosity rover took a photo of. A Mars flower. I mean, well, like, it's called the Martian flower. The, the Martian, Martian flower. Yeah, but that's like it's like like like, like the Glasgow kiss or something. Oh, like that. that's really a headbutt. Then so then it's probably not like it like the face in Mars. Someone in in our chat, GDS three K, is mentioning the face in Mars. So maybe this is like yeah. The, what happens when you do really really low res images and your wishful thinking? <laughs> but but so have you seen this? No, I haven't seen this. But I'm assuming that this is something oh, yeah, metaphorical. Us, yeah. Okay. Let's yeah, see. Martian, so cool. yeah let's the Martian it. flower. Let's see. Uh-huh. Un- NASA rover unveils Mars flower formation. Oh wow! Uh, wow, that does look like coral. It, it kind of looks like we, we're kind of seeing a, an up close of the ground of Mars, and there's like, doesn't this look like coral? Just so like yeah, sand yeah. Coral? I, mean, I, I guess I, I was I was kind of expecting it to be something a little bit more ab- uh, abstract that you would refer to as a flower like uh, shape. But this is But it. no, this looks like either a coral formation or some kind of fossilized or encrusted uh uh you know, uh, organic leafy growth. Yeah, it's it's looks like something you might expect to be like you said be organic coral or whatever. It's actually very small. It's like the size of maybe a coin. And geologists and mineralogists will point out all sorts of natural examples of how you can get things like this. You know, the, you could be everything from something like a fulgurite where you get a lightning strike that, that basically fuses things in the ground to uh, crystal formations and other stuff. So there's plenty of things that you don't need to have an organic creation for it, but it shows you how cool and how weird an alien planet can be. And you see little things like this. Because it looks very organic, is, you know? Uh, it, yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. What nobody's brought attention to, which surprised me, is the Cracker Barrel biscuits sitting next to it. Yeah, right. They look like <laughs> like some deep fried dumplings that are uh, just yep. just delish. Uh, uh, look at yeah. look at something to snack on it. They do look pretty dry though. I feel like you would need. You some could sauce butter. them up. You need some jam. Let's sauce them up. Let me sauce Get them some up. sloppy steaks. Uh, are, and, and are those just common rocks that we're seeing? Just common build up. Uh, nobody got excited about them, so I assume so. Yeah. Um, but you can see that other things, rock stuff forms there. But uh, there are desert flowers, actually, a term that we use to describe a natural formation that can happen in deserts or desert rose. If you look like a desert rose and you see this thing, it looks kind of almost like a rose. And it's like the formation of, you know, sand and I think ice and just the way the thing sort of grows. It's just spooky when you see one of these things because you think it looks organic, but it's not. And there's a lot of examples of naturally occurring things on earth is that it that uh yeah this yep. is selenite uh and it does kind of have a <laughs> petal sort of look the one we're looking at is a little almost glitchy sort of looking i uh i i, I get the opportunity to watch bryce try to track this <laughs> down but desert rose not only brought him to the single by sting but also just a lot of roses that wind up growing in the desert <laughs> that uh, i'm yep. sure many that have brightened the homes of many arizonans throughout the years <laughs> before we got to the thing we wanted to uh so it's a it's neat to see what we're going to continue to find there and the thing we have to think about too is our rovers have only explored a very, 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 very small um, uh, area of Mars. And I heard one a Martian researcher at NASA explain, you know, why they want to put humans on Mars. Because people are like, well, we have robots there. And he's like, you know, one geologist on foot, you know, could explore more area in a day than a rover can in a year. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have, I mean, just the autonomy, right? Just the fact that a person can go up there and make their own self decisions. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's from where to where to point your head to look to everything else, and you know all of those sorts of things. So, 
Uh, and it's, you know, I think there's a case for both, but it is people sort of overstate, like, well, we have robots. Are. Like, well, we don't use robots for a lot of stuff on Earth right now. You know, like, ah, yeah. you know, like, they're going to build Mars. They'll just use robots to build it. Was your house built by a robot? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like... like yeah, and we're Probably just gonna not. be sure, right? We're just gonna like we, all of a sudden we, there, we there, there, even... there, there, there's gonna be a La Quinta. We're just gonna check right in. <laughs> we don't even reliably, you know, make French fries or a Happy Meal with a robot yet. Um, so yeah. the idea that robotics are gonna do all these things that people do in the short term. Can, can I can I just say this about the uh, the 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 photo? Uh, it is kind of still remarkable the the fidelity that we see. Do we know that is that is that the raw image or or do they process and touch it up before they they put it out to the world? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, cuz we, we uh, I know for like a lot of um uh like space, you know, uh images they'll, of they'll, stars they'll, and galaxies, they pop it, a they'll little colorize bit. it, right. Um but um looking at the NASA Flickr Well, they have to they 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 do adjust it. So this is the Mars hand lands Im land imager. Uh, if we go the the Mahali, which we can see the specifications there. <clears throat> uh, color, it's a similar color quality, similar to a consumer color camera. Image size, 1600 by 1200 pixels. So uh, very likely pretty... Probably pretty close to what it is. Pretty close, yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing that we are getting those photos from the surface of Mars that look almost indistinguishable from what you would take with a uh, you know an, an iPhone, if not this generation, then maybe two generations ago at most. Yeah, I uh, I just yeah. found a picture on uh, on Twitter from at Abby Frey with a, a penny for scale, and this is way smaller than I thought it would be. It, the 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 flower that we're talking about is. Uh, maybe half of the circumference of the penny, if that. Um, so this is way. I I I guess I kind of assumed we were talking about something bigger, but it does make sense that this would no. not be very visible. Although it's hilarious, the tweet that shows us that uh, uh, penny for scale added by me, like, and not that somebody <laughs> left a penny on Mars, <laughs> or that NASA would well, like was... crop it in. Well, there was an example of some people got excited because there are people who scrutinize this looking to see, you know, if they're going to see a pull tab from a Martian beer. <laughs> and there was a rock that had this really curious looking formation that looked like a uh, bolt or something on it. And we're like, uh... oh my God, that, what is it? Explain that. And it was like, yeah, uh, four days ago, the imager went right up on top of there and ah! pushed itself <laughs> into it. <laughs> uh, uh, so, I mean, because, yeah, the, the, the uh, fidelity on that is amazing. It's very good. Especially considering the fact that it's so small. Right, because this is basically so, hey, microscopic almost. Well, not microscopic. You know, uh, a, cool, a, a, cool teles a, cool, a cool Twitter account to follow, which I just gave it away, is the James Webb Space Telescope. Oh. We're starting to see the first images. Uh, any, any, yeah, hot, they're showing. any hot finds so far? At NASA Web. Stars. <gasps> we found stars in space. What? Again? Yeah. Uh, Feels like they're they, lousy with them. Are they new stars? Are these undiscovered stars? Because I could see. Because uh, are I mean, we on a star a search? <laughs> this uh, is still calibrating and testing the telescope. I see. Uh, here we go. Oh, they've got like a GIF of some of the uh, the calibration, and so you can see the first picture where the stars almost have like an astigmatism sort of. Uh, uh, so it, sparkle it, to it, them. So it, it, yeah, it, this is all the same image that they are slowly trying to calibrate. It is that it is one star yeah. on all of the mirrors. So you're looking at yeah the mirrors that are all trying to yeah. Oh, they're all hitting. Uh, that makes sense. Why so they're yeah, in that hexa hexagonal pattern. And so now they yeah. are they are in the process of figuring out exactly how all of those things would match into one image. I imagine, right? Yeah, you're, so they're starting out yeah, with the reference points of going, okay, what do we know? Let's help confirm how this thing works. Wow, that's and so great. you know, step by step, adjusting. You know, you're trying to, you know, you can get this things, you know, hundreds of millions of miles away, and you're trying to, you know, calibrate and adjust it and fine tune it. And you know, I can't even do that with a telescope knob when I'm in front of it. I know that the James Webb Space Telescope was a controversial project that went over budget a million times and cost a, an obscene amount of money. But if we get a really lit Twitter account out of it, I feel like it's a wash. I feel like I feel like we got what <laughs> well, we paid for. At at NASA Webb, you can. Follow I'm doing it. it. Yeah, I'm uh, doing it. I'm it, following what's it right great now. Is, and look at look at its uh its location. Let's see. I'm going to go to at NASA Web here on Twitter.com at the profile. It says Lagrange Point Two. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> funny. Um, joined April 2009. Was this something before the 
Webb telescope, or was this just how long it's been in, work, in the process? I think that's how long they've been planning the telescope. Remember wow. that this is a telescope that's a very, very, very long in the waiting. Wow. Well, well, that's that's very. It would be very funny to be that social media person just at the start of the the the, the project of like, okay, cool, James Webb telescope. Let's get people excited for it in. Thirteen years. <laughs> well, and there, and there are people who signed up, who got hired at NASA to go work on this, and were excited about seeing this thing launch, and then went on and left after years. Jeez, you know how long it takes. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what doesn't take thirteen years. Uh, yeah, years. going. Anybody? Well, twelve years, thirteen years. It's all the same. Uh, it might as well be a billion years when you're living in the purgatory by not subscribing to the Patreon of Weird Things. Isn't that right, Bryce? That's right. Go to patreon.com slash weird things. Support us every week, and you can get uh, the After Things show early, yep. earlier than anybody else, a couple days early. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also support this show uh, with, with all your stuff. So if you enjoy getting your science update, your weird download, yeah, uh, all that stuff, please consider joining us at patreon.com slash weird things. You also, we have a Discord uh, for all of our podcasts. And uh, uh, you get a special green color in our Discord yep. if you're a patron subscriber. So check it out, patreon.com slash great. Everyone will know that yep. you're the one who's who's turning this wheel. The great wheel. Everybody thing. else is just freeloading. That's right. With their ears. Don't don't be an ear freeloader. Don't be an ear loader. Don't be an ear loader, please. Patreon.com slash Yeah. So scientists in Australia wanted to observe magpies. And they decided what they were going to do is put sensors on them, like tracking devices, so they could kind of see where they do, see what they're up to, because they're, you know, like many you know, certain kinds of species of birds, are very, very smart. They're a corvid, and they're corvid A, you know, those tend to have, you know, the ones that, like, you know, surprise you with what they're capable of doing. Yeah. So they put them on the magpies, they put them there, and then they realized the tracking devices just aren't staying on. Oh, they're falling and off. These are tracking. Well, they're the problem is, is these are devices they've used on similar birds, and they don't fall off. These just don't come off. But these were coming off. Hmm. They're trying to curious to try to figure out why do these keep falling off. Well, hmm, that's an interesting thing. Cause, I mean, right? Because they they would be sensors made for birds, made for tracking birds. It's not like you're putting an Apple Watch on these little fellas. Uh, Justin, do you think they're eating them? I would say, well, wait, so the tracking devices are on the birds, right? Yep. Yeah. So I don't think they're eating them, and they might be pecking at them and having them fall off. Mm. Uh, but I would say, yeah, I mean, that, that would be likely unless it was, I mean, because... Uh, if if it was something else grabbing it off it, I would find that unlikely because unless birds are very sick because they avoid predators so well, they would not be in a in a in, in a place where they'd have such a close scrape with Ooh. a tracking device. Maybe <laughs> maybe they're collecting them. Now that that may well be the case. Like they yeah. often uh, uh birds are are obviously flock animals but they will scratch each other, they will they will uh, preen each other. So uh the the fact that they might find value in them and be collecting them might be the case. Cuz you you said they're so the corvidae, right? Andrew? Yep. Um because we we've, we've talked before on this show about things like um the uh the, the crowbar where uh uh they put out this thing uh, in public, and the crows, when the crows give it cigarette butts, it gives them food. And so they learn to collect collect trash. So they apparently they designed these. These were smaller, you know, these are small birds. They designed these to make them um, uh, hard to get take off. You either need, like, magnet or scissors, you know, according to the researchers, to, put, to get them off. Yeah. They trained a group of magpies to, like, go into a feeder and whatnot. So these were pretty smart, somewhat trainable. Then they put these on there. And they write, things started to fall apart quite literally almost immediately. Within 10 minutes of fitting the fifth and final tracker, an adult female without a tracker was busy trying to remove the harness from a younger bird, eventually succeeding. This pattern was repeated in the following hours, hours and by the third day, the final tracker had removed, removed from a dominant male. <laughs> and they aren't sure if it's the same individual that removed all the harnesses or if the others chipped and help, but it's a possible sign of rescue behavior. Uh, they cooperated. They helped out. They're like... 
F this noise, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so they just, they helped each other take them off. You know, wow. uh, uh, what we have learned between my wife and I in, in owning birds is that if you don't put a little identification thing on a bird when it is a baby and, and it therefore does not have the cognitive uh, uh, awareness to say this is foreign, this is just what my leg is, my leg has a little ring around it, uh, it's impossible to keep them off. They will figure out a way to to get them off, either through cooperation or or by 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 just uh, uh, figuring well, they, out another way. Yeah, I mean, here that the, the, they say that this was you know it's one thing for a thing to peck it off, but these are harnesses the kinds of been used on birds a lot, which they don't. They this feels like new yeah. behavior. They haven't observed other birds helping these birds take them off like this. Birds yeah. will like you know peck at another bird like they're maybe pecking them, but to like to, to spin that much behavior and then to go through all the other birds and to remove them. It do is, it for each other like no, a prison it, break. It is it is very smart. It is it is extraordinarily smart uh, 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 behavior uh, because you're you're you are you are right. Like there is there is cooperation, but but that seems very specific, especially since it happened immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, gosh, I mean, I don't even know what you do in that case. I mean, other than what you get some baby ones, find and... new magpies. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say yeah, if you if you raise them from captivity, but they, even then, it's like the point of what you want to do is to find wild ones wild so you ones. can track them. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and and it might be an argument to say, from an ethical point of view, maybe find a different way to study them because clearly they're not happy with them. They don't like the trackers. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, and and so it. Oh, Bryce. Uh, well, and you know, if 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 there's any chance that the trackers are affecting their habitat, their their behaviors, or you know their instincts, then any data you gain would have a huge asterisk on it because just the fact of how you were measuring it could change, could be changing their behaviors entirely. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Sad news, we'll get, you know, just touch upon the kind of political events, but it kind of relates here to weird things, is that in Ukraine, you may have heard that uh, Muria, the world's largest plane, got destroyed during uh, Russian airstrikes. No, I did not. Oh, no. So, yeah, the MRIYA is a largest airplane and is used to carry all sorts of things across long distances and originally, I believe, was built to carry the Soviet shuttle, the Buran. Oh. Which remember the Soviets had their yeah. own space shuttle program, and they had some pretty good innovations with it. And the Buran was going to use just liquid fueled, and that uh, this was basically the carrier for that. If you look at the way it's designed, so it's kind of a nice piece of history. Wow! Just got oh. lost. Of course, the Buran itself is riding away in a warehouse somewhere, so it's not like a lot of nostalgia over there for it, but. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, one of one of one of many things lost during that uh, current ongoing incursion. Yeah, yeah. gosh. So, oh. anyhow, but I thought, um, like I read that, I'm like, oh, I know, I've seen this. You know, that that's that airplane. Yeah, it's big. And you know, we 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 have talked um, in the past year or two about using planes to possibly launch things into orbit or suborbit, right? Um, and so it's not like this is like ancient technology. Like it's still pretty relevant. Well, no, it, this this degree. wasn't used for that. This I was mean, just sure. used to piggyback. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, sure. Yeah. But just as a cultural touchstone, this is not. <laughs> this is not George Washington's fife. This is uh, something a little more contemporary. Yeah. Well, I mean, arguably, it could have had a bigger impact. Uh, than George this Washington's was fife, his rockets. legendary fife. He, he so loved good. that fife, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah I, I thought alt history. I, I, I thought Andrew, uh, uh, when you were were paying tribute, that that you were going to mention somebody that uh, uh, we we lost this week. Uh, the amazing Jonathan, uh, uh, you know, pioneer certainly of of magic and comedy, and somebody that I know you had you had a relationship with, and and uh, you know through through Ride Tricks we we covered a lot. Yeah, so uh, AJ or Jonathan, however you want to call him, um, uh, you know, he was a person I like to hang out with. He, he and you know, um, Spartan Anastasia, who I really enjoyed her, you know, being around her. She's you know known the pair of them, known her longer than him, and then knowing AJ personally, um, 
you know, it's rough. It's just, it's just rough. We've known for a long time that Jonathan's yeah. had really health problems and, you know, was given a much shorter amount of time to live several years ago. And, you know, it kind of became a running joke. You'd see him be like, you again, you know, yeah. um, but, uh, <laughs> and then finally, you know, he was right. And, you know, then he's, you know, it's sort of this weird thing. It's like, yeah, that's another person that I'm not going to run into at a party or hang out with and have a great conversation with for a few hours, you know? Uh, in terms of his art, I, I think it is astounding that his style of magic and comedy, style of comedy is something that I think still kind of stands alone in both spheres. I don't think there's a lot of comics that are like Amazing Jonathan, and I don't think there's a lot of magicians that come anywhere near to the kind of charisma that he had. Uh, uh, I know for me, the Comedy Central Lounge Lizards a uh, 30 minute special that he did was something that either because it was in high rotation with comedy central uh, and, and because I never tuned away from it as soon as it was on was uh, uh, I- iconic. And it was a lot of his, a lot of his big stuff, but even watching him live when he was still performing, he still, I, I don't think he ever really lost his fastball. And you know, while he was up on stage or, or doing, uh, doing uh, uh, a performing. Yeah. Jonathan, was amazing because you know you 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 would hear comedians go oh prop comic uh-huh you know yeah. they kind of roll their eyes at that and then you go like what am i using jonathan and be like oh well you know that that's different <laughs> you know like, oh, like, like that's because jonathan was a guy that used magic or used that as a excuse to do things but he was just hilarious and it made it just it was a way to kind of a way a differentiator he could i would watch him go talk to him before a show where he just grabbed some things from the dollar store or whatever, and then go up two hours later on stage and make it into a hilarious bit. Cause yeah. he could just come up with stuff like that. And he was just, his mind was just so, so funny. And I'll, I'll, I'll share this story here. Uh, cause I couldn't figure out how to put it on Twitter. The, the first time I ever really got to talk to him was I was in Vegas and I went to go see his show and uh, you know it, I think it was Sahara or whatever I think it was it was like there he had a showroom there and I go there and I'm I'd seen him before before I think in South Florida and I remember he just died laughing it's just so funny and then I go see him and he comes on stage and then he brings this woman this this parent volunteer and then uh announces that she's pregnant and then proceeds to shove his hand through her body and push a baby out <laughs> of her front of her stomach <laughs> And, uh, you know, basically performing an abortion, perhaps we would call it with, it's a fake baby, but, uh, yeah. Oh, um, good. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Just to clarify, yeah. uh, what was funny was he used a uh, trick that I had invented to do this. I was going to say, <laughs> walk- did he, did he, he yes. used, he used your trick. That's amazing. He used, he used that. He used, it was a thing that I pr- trick I created. I pretty literally is commercially. And Jonathan's interpretation of it was by far the most imaginative one I've seen. And <laughs> to I'm watching push it. a baby through. I, I, I'm horrified and <laughs> delighted in all it was. And then afterwards, I go up to him. I go, oh, and the trick's like, oh, like, that's a gut buster. He goes, yeah. I go, yeah, I created that. And he's looking. I could see him just this look in his eye like, what's going to happen next? Exactly. Go, that was amazing. That was hilarious. I loved it. He's like, ah, oh, it was, then he was like, ah, oh, he's like, oh, you're going to be able to We got along, but it was like, I'm not like, yeah. how dare you uh, so desecrate my, my magical creation where you just, you shove a hand through the skin and rip it. And was, it's beautiful. Say, and for, the for, folks, for folks who are not aware of the way the gut buster works without getting into the method, it involves visibly protruding and tearing skin. Like it is, it is something that, that when you do it in, in a, in, in a bloodless way that like shows that there's like, like a, a, a penetration, it looks very eye popping. If you do it with the context that amazing Jonathan did it, it is somewhere between the most horrifying thing you've ever seen and the funniest, most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Uh, and, and that always seemed like, uh, as an outsider on The Amazing Jonathan, it always seemed like he was able to really ride that line of like squeamish comedy and very funny without overly, uh, I don't know, turning people away. He um, and not, he, but also not being particularly safe. He oh. had he had that gift about him that Bob Saget had too. You liked them, yeah. You liked mm-hmm. them, 
and and so they would take you to places that if you didn't like that person you would not be comfortable to go but because you liked them and jonathan is a nice guy jonathan was a, just a super sweet person and you'd say hey is this crazy guy let's be around i'm like well you hang out with them you may notice from time to time there may be weird wisps of smoke coming out because he's a clever magician that figured out how to do meth in front of people um so uh, bryce is playing clips from gut buster we're looking the gut buster it's great Poor birdie. Uh, Poor birdie. Poor birdie. Uh, that was that was so that was my that was my roommate oh, uh, really? when yeah. uh uh when when i first heard about uh scam school too he was the one who told me wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, I could imagine right. doing this. Okay, sorry. We're just, right, yeah, we're just, yeah, we just go. watch yeah. old yeah. old clips. Uh, yeah. I, I, I will say this about Amazing Jonathan. In the world of comedy and magic, the only comps that I would say for Jonathan's onstage energy would be like Sam Kinison or Bill Hicks or, 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 or people that were just among the most singular force of nature, like, they are a boulder going downhill in magic. I mean, the closest thing that you would probably say would be Penn Gillette, but even then Penn always sort of had the kind of, uh, uh, the, the, the bard element to him where, where he would, he would want to be more erudite and flowery. And like, yes, he had the, the sledgehammer, but he wanted to also kind of do the high minded stuff where, uh, uh, amazing Jonathan was just like, Wow, it was just just a howitzer that comedically I mean again there's there's only a few comps for 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 that and it's literally the top of the mountain. It is it is the Mount if Olympus. You, if you look at the beats per minute that Jonathan had, like yeah. the the how many how often you laughed and and there's depending upon your style there can be different approaches like a guy like darren brown a mentalist like i remember watching one of his shows which is a great show and it's 10 minutes before the first trick happens yeah and that's fine because he's world building getting you to that point jonathan's in a comedy club vegas sort of in atmosphere where you need to make people feel like they got the most amazing two hours in you know 90 minutes yeah. and or 45 or depending upon that and and the skill and he just not everything moved from one thing to thing and you'd watch how he could bring one he 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 was so brilliant about the way he figured things out he'd bring a spectator up and not just do a trick and then excuse him he would just do trick after trick after trick after trick after trick with this person and keep this person up for 20 minutes you know for a large part of the show and nobody did that i wasn't aware of anybody that ever did that and and it does two things one is it allows him to go from effect to effect much more faster Second, it creates a character or a foil for him on stage yeah. that is part of it. And and Jonathan is you're not gonna you you be like, oh well, you know, he's very, very good at who he selects. And Jonathan's not gonna get steamrolled over by somebody. Somebody's no. not gonna be like if Jonathan if, if you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna go up here and oh magic trick, whatever, you're gonna you're you know, like it's you know, it just you. Bryce is scrolling through here, and we're watching yeah. this guy on stage for like he, fifteen minutes. He's on stage for thirteen of the twenty-one minutes in this lounge lounge lizards video uh, yep. performance, which is that's the wait. majority of the special. It's, it's a thirty-minute special <laughs> and uh, 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 twenty-one minutes. So twenty, uh, uh, you know, with, with commercials, it's thirty. Uh, yeah, you're right. It just just absolutely, absolutely ridiculous, but like like a like andrew said there was someone to play off and b mm -hmm. there was it was the added social proof of like he's killing like this guy next to him is dying laughing he he is is i mean and and also i guess that's the other thing is that in the world of magic this is kind of instructive i guess in the world of magic a person that comes up on stage usually what you get out of them is like awe like i can't believe that oh man that's nuts maybe a giggle or something if you throw in a, a, a little witty rejoinder but like jonathan just brought up and stand-up comedians don't do that they don't bring up somebody and say oh let me just kill right next to you so everybody can understand that i'm that i'm destroying right now <laughs> Uh, and he did both. He made he made an audience member do something more than just be how do they how did he do that, and uh, uh, had that had uh, that, that social proof. And also it was just it, it was just the mastery of confidence to just be like, no, you're just gonna stay up here 
and I'm just going to brah, just just go one. And some of them were dumb gags. Some of them were prop comedy. Some of them was actual magic. Like you just, you never knew what was going to happen. That's the other thing I was just going to say. He was doing stuff like this is 96 and he just does a jar full of Coke (laughs) Uh, like on stage as, as <laughs> he's part of it. Tricks with and them. then he just does straw tricks because he's done so much coke. Uh, but also the thing is that comes after a bit where he's like drinking Windex. So it even sets that up to the point where you're not like, this isn't drug humor, but it's not Cheech and Chong. Right. You know, he's just this bizarre cartoon character that, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a Ren and Stimpy world, he's just made flesh. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, talking about that Lounge Lizard special, I feel like I've seen, he had a Comedy Central Percent special, and I feel like I watched that mm-hmm. a million times too. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, to kind of piggyback on something you said, Danger, it's like, it was a very singular tone that, that he brought. He, it was a, a kind of almost like um, Mitch, Mitch Hedberg of like, that's a very specific signature sound and style, and it's very hard to replicate without being the amazing Jonathan guy or the the oh you're kind of like the uh, the other guy you know uh, to 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 own to own and and own your signature style like that is great and I don't I don't I mean I don't know everybody but uh, I don't know how many people are doing you know creep out and extreme bits like that. I mean, there, there is, you know, there's a genre of kind of stuff that it, it's one of these things where like you can have, you can have shock magic or you can have things like that. And then the, the thing is though, is that Jonathan was doing comedy with the idea of, let me play the, you know, this character that is this like this, but he, I mean, part of the brilliance is if you were to ask going back on like the confidence he had, if you ask somebody, if you were to go to Magic and say, oh, should I have a spectator up on stage for 15 minutes? They'd tell you it's a bad idea. And be like, they'd be like, why? Well, like, well, they could be a bad spectator. And they'd yeah. be like, well, what if I'm smart my spectator selection and I can control? Like, yeah, but maybe you want a variety. It'd be, it's one of these things where the, the, the obvious advice may be true for most people, but when you're Amazing Jonathan, it's not. It's, it's that like, no, you could actually be a strength because now by not having to select four people, mm-hmm. you've cut out two minutes yeah. of time that it takes to get them in this, in the silly banter you have of who they are. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things I loved about his thinking was that you, it was about getting from laugh to laugh, to laugh, to laugh. And sometimes magic happened. <laughs> um, and then when it did, you were surprised because it's a really good story building. Like you're the, the narrative you get watching him on stage was, Oh, he's, He's just a prankster, you know? And then when he does fool you, you're like, oh, oh, wait, how did he do that? You know? And yeah. that was a kind of a really great example. Like ma- magic, we talk about storytelling, but magicians take it really literally. And like, <laughs> when I was a boy, I bought a Dr. Harps. It's like, that's, I'm like, and I, and the example I try to get people to reframe how they think about it, I said like, who is probably the greatest magician performing today? And I'd maybe argue that's probably Teller. And, uh, you know, and a pen and teller's great, but Teller by himself with performing something I think is as well polished as you could hope for. Teller never speaks in the show. Yeah. And he is a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And that's what storytelling is, is it whether it's a red ball following him around or something else. And that's, you get into that and you watch Jonathan, what's the story he's telling? This guy's erratic. This guy's, you know, uh, you know, you know, he, we, you know, the, He's got this dark side to him, you know, like, ah, you know, you look like that person that, you know, hold the knife. Hey, you look like the person that killed my parents, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I killed my parents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just about things like that. And then, but then the, the kind of the genius that he sets you up with that expectations and then he slams, surprises you and stuff. And I remember, mm-hmm. you know, at one point he did a bit where he has this little puppet, this little crazy looking puppet. And then, he, they did this in the co- you know in a comedy club, and all of a sudden the lights turn out and strobe lights flip on, and all these sort of like you know, uh, crazy like neon light goes on, and and it's like he's just said, I want to make it. What is it? What if I made everybody feel like they're on a drug trip? And the puppet's like ah, da da da, and the puppet's just like it's like he created like he made a trick that's like and David Copperfield has his snow, yeah, amazing. Jonathan has his LSD trip for the audience <laughs> trick. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it was that was a like, kind of i thought about that like wow like this is how to, totally different ways to sort of look at it you know and then 
you know, and the puppet, you know, yells at the woman next to him, show me our movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's different goals, right? Oh, well, they're just comedy. different visions. It just shows you, I mean, and, yeah. and, and, and again, I don't want to do it for the millionth time that, that I think uh, uh, oftentimes magic does not creatively challenge itself enough but uh it, it is in stark relief when you see the people that are chasing visions and building on visions and building true characters that can tell extraordinary stories and there's a million different directions that you can take it and 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 you can dial up and down the amount of magic like darren brown's a great example that's kind of counterintuitive to a lot of people because they obviously are polar opposite in terms of the kind of tenor and magic that they do but darren brown could do and probably has done TED Talks, and if you went to go see Darren Brown, and 80% of it was literally just him giving an erudite lecture about the mind and the brain and telling stories and stuff like that, you'd be like, oh, tell me more, Darren. And then he would do a trick, and it would be the craziest thing ever. He doesn't have to do stuff on like, oh, well, I got eight tricks that I polished really well, and I'm just going to figure out uh, connective tissue to put them all together. And that's the same thing with Jonathan. Jonathan could do shock magic comedy insult the uh, he could work the crowd like like there's and there's any number of just straight up comedy things that he could do and then he would put magic in there or he would do a bunch of magic stuff back to back and it would be hilarious because he'd be presenting it in in the funniest possible way yeah and uh, you, so uh, I, I not to make it too after thingsy but like that's the difference between like doing say a performance for other magicians to try you know for your cred right you do a lot of audience members so you show how fair everything is but when your goal is to like entertain the audience then who cares about your magic authority yeah. they just want to have a good time I mean, also you know, uh spoiler alert for all magicians the goal is always to entertain the audience <laughs> that but, is but, always the goal <laughs> but it gets insular right it gets insular. oh in in ways that we probably don't have time to fully <laughs> discuss even on this show do you know, I've, I've told you about the game show that he hosted. No. The Amazing Jonathan did? No. He hosted in the early 90s. Murph Griffin, Murph Griffin produced it. It was a show called Ruckus, which ended up on, it aired on like in one network or in the one one market and it ended up on the game show network for a while. Uh, you can look up YouTube for clips of Ruckus, which he did 60 episodes of that. It was wow. Uh, wow. So. And, uh, and he's like doing bits and he's wow okay huh yeah that's fascinating so wait so so i, I uh, uh did that come together because uh, merv just saw his act they're like we gotta put something around him and 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 do it or or because base i assume that's the i've talked to him only a little bit about it but i think that was you know like how to you know you know put something together based on that whatever and so <laughs> you know it's just him you know these audience has to perform you know do puzzles or whatever but then jonathan is your host who's your madman and it's a you know neat neat concept they filmed it at the merv griffin resorts and so it was a interesting promise i've only seen little bits and clips from it but like you know it's just you, you look at that like somebody's like there's a talent how do we harness this you yeah know, how do we make use of this yeah wow how, how do we take what you do make it bigger and better and put it on television yeah, yeah. that's great 60 episodes wow yeah Damn. man they I made some tv back then. thing too yeah, and he did. He did. He did an Australian series too, which I'm trying to remember what that was. I'll so. bet you he crushed he's in Australia. Up. He's got a very Australia energy. <laughs> I think he married an Australian woman at one point. Um, Damn. Yeah. So uh, let's do picks. Hey, my pick is Genius J E E N dash Y U S. Uh, it is a Netflix documentary around uh, following Kanye West. Uh, it is a trilogy. Each episode is about hour and a half, two hours. Third episode is coming out, I believe, this week. But uh, the 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 behind the scenes on this is that there is this guy Cootie, who uh, was a uh, effectively a cable access host that you know in Chicago back in the uh, mid '90s who just took a camera to these hip hop shows and parties and would just walk around the party and people would come and yell and, and shout out their, their projects and stuff like that. One of those guys is Kanye West. Uh, he becomes friends with them. And eventually when Kanye, uh, as a producer moves to New York to work with uh, Rockefeller records, uh, Cootie goes and moves to New York and just keeps shooting him and following his career. And so the first two episodes, the bulk of the documentary 
is really following him through Chicago to New York and and eventually, you know, leading all the way up to him winning the Grammy for uh for the college dropout, his debut album. And the process to even get the album out is really the most fascinating thing. It is a must watch if you love hip hop, if you love 2000s hip hop specifically. And, and a lot of the names in New York is re- are really just uh, uh, amazing. But also to just understand how that business works. And also just if you want to get inspired on like somebody that for everything that you might know of Kanye West in terms of his like braggadocio and arrogance, the work that he was putting in the amount of that album that was done by the time that he even got signed to Rockefeller Records, let alone when they agreed to put the album out, uh, you know, was was amazing. I mean, he's got like almost fully formed versions that he had demoed out by himself of like half the album wow. that they're playing before they had yeah, the record before. deal. And, and 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 you know, the 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 documentary kind of makes it clear that there's an operating theory that they only gave him the deal because they wanted him to keep making beats and he wouldn't shut up about it. In fact, there's one funny thing. There's a viral clip that's gone around of him going to the Rockefeller records, uh, 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 office and playing the song all falls down. And the, uh, the people that he's playing it for just stone faced, like, like, okay, what are you, what are you doing? And this is a classic song, right? And so people on Twitter have come, because all these people that are in this documentary are now still in the industry and on Twitter. And they're like, uh, yeah, just context on that clip. This was the 18th time that he had come in <laughs> and done that and rapped this song for us. So it's like, yeah, the first few times we were all very impressed by the 18th time that he demands to rap the song. We're just like, Kanye, we have stuff to do. Uh <laughs> But it, just record it once and then just play it. Yeah, it, it's fine. But but for him, he would not take no for an answer. Right. Like and and that is, I, I found it to be very very inspirational. Genius. Uh. Okay. Oh, Andrew uh, did just have to run. He had a little bit of a business thing. I've got a pick. Go. Uh. Oh, we. T- I think Brian might have picked it last week, but I'm picking it. Um. And I watched it before him. So nanny nanny boo boo. It's Severance <laughs> on Apple TV Plus. Uh. Boy, is this a good show. I think this is a really neat show. Um, I think it does a good job of taking that uh, the tone of things like control, uh, the video game control, or the Stanley Parable, mm-hmm. um, any of those kind of dystopian office things, yeah, office fantasy, yeah, almost. Um, it it kind of does a good line with that, um, and I I I, I kind of don't want to lean too much into describing it because I think it's a show. I think it's a very good show, and. When I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this. And I think if I hadn't even seen the trailer, I would still like it and and would watch it. Um, but uh, I think it's really great. Adam Scott is fantastic in it. Um, uh, the whole cast is very good. It's a very interesting sort of sci-fi adjacent premise. Um, and there's a lot of, I will say, as someone who likes mysteries and uh, poking around and finding all the little corners and clues and stuff, mm-hmm. they're doing a very good job of setting up a credible mystery setting up a very weird building yeah. and not knowing exactly what they do. I don't know what's going on in there, yeah. but you know, you want to. So that, I think that's very good. Severance on Apple TV plus. Uh, yeah, man, these, these streamers just always giving you reasons to keep giving them money. Yeah. I mean, between that and the after I was, I, I, I don't know if you've had this thought lately. I'm thinking of pausing Netflix for a minute. I feel like once, once drive to survive comes out and I finish that, which is like in a week or two, I think I'm not, I think I might pause Netflix for a month. I don't know, unless something else comes out. But that's the thing is you never know, right? Then you pause it and then everyone's like, oh, are you watching Dingledorf? And it's like, 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 oh, no, I haven't. It's like, oh, it's the best. Like, And then everybody starts talking their favorite Dingledorf quotes and now you're behind. And and did you watch it with subtitles or did you watch it in <laughs> was 3D? It, was, it, was it subs or dubs? <laughs> <laughs> right. uh yeah no I, I i i i agree i think that what's what's amazing about it is that every once in a while we have to pop over to this other app like it's disney or or mm-hmm. hbo although hbo's on been on a heater lately i feel like hbo has uh, been uh between wolves and gemstones yeah uh, gemstones finished strong search party good oh i should have made gemstones my pick well gemstones was, gemstones I, was very good it's just yeah it's just 
Eric. Although I, oh. I, I won't. All oh. I'll say is that oh. there was a fan theory going into the final episode. Mm -hmm. So a non-spoiler. It's not a thing a that does not happen. <laughs> uh, but a, a, a discredited fan theory that they had set up throughout the season various gangs. You had the God Squad. The motorcycle ninjas. Oh, uh huh. Uh, Jesse's uh, 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 support guys. group. Yeah. Uh, uh, with, oh, with the with the slings. Yeah. The Memphis uh, mafia with the, and 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 the pro wrestlers among them. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, there was a fan theory that we were going to see a gangs of New York style <laughs> Brawl. clash of all of these gangs that you had set up <laughs> throughout the show. So you do not get that. If there's anything that, that we can, that we can ding it for. The one thing that I was also very excited about mm. is we have a fan that uh, worked on this season oh, on yes. the technical side yeah, and sent me <gasps> a, uh, uh, a prayer pamphlet that uh, was from this finale. No kidding. Because there are, there are lyrics inside of it. Uh, For and people I to thought, sing along. I thought it was just uh, Laura Mipsum, or they just put some random song that they, uh, that they wanted to put in there. But no, that's the song they sing in the final montage that all the kids uh, all the, the 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 gemstones are all singing together oh that's, uh, that's so really cool. and then they when they cut to the crowd you can see that that thing so that i'm very excited and also anybody who's come to my house that uh nobody's mentioned it yet no one's been like justin that's weird that you have a church pamphlet on your uh on your fridge <laughs> but maybe now they'll know i think we're it's just it's a not judgmental city we're not a very judgy city no no, no. So. but maybe they should point out that we went to the gemstones <laughs> mega church come on man i got TV history. I'm like, I'm like GD fridge. Is that Amy Lee? Is that an Amy Lee original? Is that an Amy Lee? All righty, already. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us here on the Weird Things Podcast for Andrew and Justin. I've been Bryce. It's been weird. <laughs> okay, cool. I got, I got something we can do for after things for, a, for a little bit. Can you so. keep, can you keep the ball afloat for a two seconds? Let me hit the head. Absolutely, positively. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the thing you've been listening to for the past sixty seconds. Uh, hi. We're going to do after things here in just a minute. Um, man, Severance is very good. I was watching all of the shows for um, Spoiling Time, because we got Spoiling Time coming up later today. And in the middle of it, I I was like, I need to just watch Severance. I just got to watch Severance. You know? I mean, Gemstones is great, but Gemstones is like late on Sunday. And then, uh, what was the other thing? What's the other thing that we're watching? There was Miami Vice, which I watched after. Oh, and Raised by Wolves. And Raised by Wolves. Which is getting very goofy. Get Raised by Wolves get a little goofy, but hey, but it's but it's interesting. Yeah, I I I we've talked about it on Spoiler Time so many times, but I like I liked how like prestige drama-y the first season of Raised by Wolves felt. And now season two feels like. Well, we oh you were gonna renew us? We gotta do, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's fine, but it's uh, it's it's a little goofy. It's a little goofy, and that's a difficult thing with mysteries because um, it is a little sci-fi. I see you, but uh, that's the thing with mysteries is if if they're not like you can you can probably take most any mystery premise and find a good way to ask those questions. But you probably, uh, you're probably gonna have more difficulty with a, a mystery that has that is goofy answers uh, in the end. By the time you get to them, we're talking about Raised by Wolves because uh, I think last season was very cool and very mysterious and prestige, and this season now that they're answering things, it's a little like, oh, those are, those are yeah. dumb. Yeah, those are kind of dumb. I mean, I think that like. Raised by Wolves is a show where I don't know if I want answers. I want really? I want resolutions to conflicts more than I want answers because some of the stuff that they're wrestling with, especially because it's such an elemental show, like mm. it's about life yeah. and nurturing and belief and like, you know, like at its at its core is like where should your utmost faith reside inside yourself? or beyond yourself, like, which right. is 
the root of all <laughs> philosophy, <laughs> right? So it's like these are not things that I need. Like, like, uh, 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 where should uh, uh, you know, uh, this faith reside? It's like, oh, wherever the evil worm isn't. Like, like I don't, I don't need an answer to that per se. Mm -hmm. I need an answer to will the kid survive? You know, will the uh, colony be intact? Like, mm -hmm. uh, how do they find food? Like, I, I think that that's. Those are those are things that I, I want answered. The more that they delve into, I think the, the times where even in the first season, things got a little kind of like off track was when it got way into the mythology of the universe where it's like, eh, and I, I don't know. I just, it's, let's, when it's, when it's about the planet and it's about the, the things that happened a billion years ago and stuff like that. I'm, I'm less interested. I'm more interested in, in these characters that are living in a crazy world. I don't mm. need the world explain. I don't need everybody to be like, Oh, is that a Flingelhoff that invented in uh, uh, the, the 18th century by, by Ed Flingelhoff. That's right. And uh, Flingelhoff juniors, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 like even in I was taking some notes to prove that I was watching this show this week <laughs> and awake, and um, uh, one thing I noticed as I was taking notes is like yeah I don't really care about the character names but I do care about when something good happens and I think that is kind of parallel to the d the difference between answers and resolutions. Yeah, um, yeah, which I get that makes sense. Yeah, all right, all right. You want to do an after thing? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Yeah. Three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, your host, joined as always with my co-host, Justin Robert Young. Yeah, yeah. And nobody else. Uh, this is the show about being <laughs> about being creative people online, doing work, yeah. getting stuff done. Uh, hello, Justin. Welcome back. Hey, man. Yeah, Andrew's got a job, and uh, Brian is currently promoting... World's Greatest Con. World's Greatest Con Season 2, launching today. First episode is out. Ooh. Um... It uh, uh, so far so good. People seem to really dig it. So uh, I am also promoting it. Go get it. Yeah. Uh, it is O two O one Fame and Shame, exploring uh, the, uh, the the game show scandal that forever defined the industry. Mm. Twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Oh, I don't and, see uh, it. Maybe. Oh, oh, it's. Uh, huh. Yeah. There. Oh, does it do it opposite? Uh. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's cause it's a narrative thing, so they're like, oh, you should start at the beginning. Oh, but... right. Yeah, that's how the new seasonal RSS feature yeah. works. Well, um, uh, thank you, everybody. For check out, yeah, check that out. Any podcatcher, really, uh, World's Greatest Content. Wherever you find podcasts. And if you if you are looking for it on a place where you find podcasts and you don't see it, call me directly. My number <laughs> is 954 <laughs> Eight nine no, five stop, five stop. six six five. No, that's a public. That's a, okay. That's a public number. Um. Uh. Yes. So check that out. And if you want to add free, they got a Patreon. Check that out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I got two things I want to talk about today. Here Go. after things. Uh. This is a breaking. Or this was news today. Uh. TikTok announced that they would be allowing users uh to upload videos up to ten minutes long. This yeah. is a change from last year, I believe, when they made it three minutes, mm -hmm. which was up from sixty seconds, which was up from fifteen seconds. Yeah. Um, so now you have TikTok, which is in pre-Google uh, acquisition YouTube territory, right? Yep. Videos up to 10 minutes. Yep. Uh, and they've got their ad network and their brand yeah. marketplace and all so that. So you would stuff. imagine a few fewer follow for part twos. I would hope so, because I know that when I'm on TikTok, I, I do scroll very quickly because it's designed for short form media. But I know that there are plenty of times where I stop and watch something and go, I would like to watch more of this, or I could watch deeper in this. Um, in fact, uh, this past week, partly because of a promotion that we're doing, uh, I've been making some more TikTok videos for Modern Rogue, Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the Modern Rogue user on there. And um, uh, that was one of the things that I've been, been kind of getting back into is like, okay, you got to take this 20-minute video and turn it down into something, right? It can be less than three minutes, but lots of stuff pops off way shorter than that. Um, and now we, with 10 minutes, there's, there, you kind of get the possibility. I kind of wish Brian was here cause he could talk about this a little bit, but, yeah. uh, you get the possibility of like, we've got videos that are under 10 minutes. Most of our scam nation videos are under 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, uh, 10 minutes <laughs> is like 
a whole segment on cord killers. Like you can put a lot of Oh, you can you can really you can you can jam a lot in ten minutes for sure. Yeah. Um so I don't know. I, I it's worth it's interesting because it TikTok is definitely not in the place that YouTube was at the same sort of ten minute milestone mark, and that's not even really an uh anything proper i'm just, it's just a flag but um i don't know how do you feel about the idea of tiktok moving into longer form uh material i think it was a matter of time before they did it i, I don't think that tiktok is particularly defined by a time limit i think that uh in general when when sites like that move into those time limits especially if they are born with those uh it often has more to do with uh how the maximizing their runway for how much it costs to host uh, uh, and, and stream videos like that. Yeah. With that being said, I think it will define the platform a little bit more. The big question, and they would know probably more than anybody, is unlike YouTube, YouTube was founded on the idea of watching videos on your computer. Right. So Of the time. Very, uh, that was cutting edge desktop, at the time. Desktop computer right so it's like an inner uh, a gigantic repository for video what an amazing concept and they got their algorithm right so you were able to do it their communities uh, were built on the, uh, upon that platform great job hooray 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 tiktok was built to have to be watching stuff on your phone right now mobile habits are something that i think are a l- if not misunderstood, often misjudged, you know, uh, people of, of my age, my rapidly, rapidly <laughs> ascending age, uh, would, would believe mobile to be short because that's what, that was a definition mm-hmm. of what it was for me based on the technical elements when I remember these, that this, this medium being birthed. It's like, nobody wants to watch on our nobody wants to watch a movie on your phone what? right yeah uh, i remember you remember the that classic david david lynch clip of like why you would never want to watch a movie on a phone and someone cut it together with the iphone um like commercials at yeah. the time and it's like that was the prevailing thought it's like why would you ever watch 90 minutes of a thing on your phone and now like uh i don't know like there's this weird almost like I don't know. There, there are so many iPad kids that I think that yeah. that's taking people away from video gaming because mobile gaming is so big and broad and it's very different from what you might consider core gaming or console gaming, but that's where the people are. That's where, I mean, that's where kids who uh, uh, learn on that platform because from a, an infant, they're being handed uh, a thing to watch what they want to watch because yeah. it's easier and better for, for uh, parents to deal with it. So it's like, I I don't think that inherently mobile means short. I understand that TikTok wants to m- maximize your ability to stay on that platform. The quest I have two questions. Number 1, how does that feed their ad model because one of the things that really works for TikTok is scroll your board scroll 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 you're eventually going to get an ad that are only getting better and better at becoming native so it takes you longer and longer before you realize that you're actually watching an ad for whatever, you know, predatory payday loan or whatever <laughs> that people are are, are pushing. Yeah. But more than that, what will be the internal policing of that TikTok community, mm. which I think is is a, a more complicated question than you might initially think, because TikTok is about creating, quote unquote, organically these communities. So maybe. There are people that are like, oh, if I only got exactly the naval history videos that I wanted and they were all anywhere between five and ten minutes, that's what I would love TikTok to be. Yeah. I would dry ass uh, a naval history. The USS videos. Monterey in like, 1957. Oh, yeah. Sailed the Balkan Sea. Uh, oh, this is the best, right? But meanwhile, I think for a lot of folks, if it gets over a certain time, they're just going to. So I, I wonder where the internal logic of what kind of videos. I think if anything, this will strata TikTok out more mm-hmm. if just based on, oh, no, I want to hear people talk longer about stuff. I want to hear them explain more about stuff or I'm literally just here for the quick 
dopamine. Right. And, you know, this is actually uh, this is actually a weird case of like Instagram being first to this uh, before an, a competitor because uh, Instagram, you had a very similar thing with IGTV, uh, the idea of yeah. making videos up to 30 plus minutes yeah. long. Um, and and that was a weird thing because I think that was like partly vertical, partly horizontal. Yeah, they also and, wanted it was an uploadable from the computer sometimes but not like the, yeah not all the time and you had to be a uh, i think you had to be a partner or something yeah that was weird I, I think instagram instagram post facebook has had some moments where they've made the right call they i i very much believe that they innovated snapchat's core product was getting stale and frustrating for no reason and instagram did a lot with instagram stories to make it more palatable uh but they've also had some of those things where it's like instagram tv where where it's like oh we're also youtube right it's like i don't want i don't want that i don't want youtube is good for other reasons up to and including the fact that youtube's been around forever there's just no one who's going to be able to match right. what youtube does which is like Hey, I need a car honking sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I also need to look up the debate from 1964. Oh, it. also, I I need to uh, look up uh, uh, the 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 first time that I was ever on uh, a Daily Tech News show. I go to one <laughs> go to site, one page. Exactly. I go to one site for it, <laughs> and uh, that I think that need the the idea that like you can't just do what YouTube did. I think is probably a pro in the idea that TikTok will figure out something new and novel because like it, the the tick the, the YouTube way you would do this is when someone is uploading a long video you would say okay here are the points where it makes sense to add ad breaks yeah. um or you know we'll cut in our own thing and you just put in like a hey this is a sponsored content or something um but a lot of those habits and a lot of those user behaviors just won't work on TikTok um beyond the fact of like long videos i mean i think if you've if you've used tiktok you you notice that like there's not not every video you can actually scroll or scrub through only no. really long videos can you scroll through and even then they don't even show you the playhead anymore it no you have to pause it right and then maybe the playhead shows up or you just drag you're supposed to like intuit that you can just drag your finger near the bottom okay um but again that's only for longer videos and so it's it's like they're not even built for that so i don't even know how you would do if you would even do a native ad insertion thing like youtube because so much of tiktok is already built upon hey we're going to put you in touch with marketers make organic content and we'll put a sponsored thing on it and you'll figure it out um, which is very different from youtube which is more of like a like the search auction for keywords at google um it, yeah it's more like that and so i i think the fact that you can't just do what youtube is doing for tiktok means that they will have to do something new and different and they've kind of I shown think that, they that they're gonna figure out i think what what this is doing and i think it's smart it, it shows you that they are a platform that is on the rise is that they are just giving their creators more ammunition that they want i would imagine that when they pull their creators one of the things that they ask is would you like longer videos and the answer is yes so this right. <clears throat> this isn't a bump from three to five. This, this is, is a, a bump tool from three to three to ten. Right. So now they are saying, okay, we are future proofing this for whatever. Maybe people get to ten minute videos. Maybe they don't. But now we are just saying your three minute and fifty second video can now be three minutes and fifty seconds. Right. Uh, and I think that that is that is smart. I I I suspect that the nature of TikTok will keep the average video still far shorter than an average YouTube video. Uh, but who knows? Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll certainly be interesting to see. I would, I, I would like to certainly play around with that space and see what happens because it's, it is, yeah, it's TikTok is like doing a YouTube thing, but it's very much like Twitter or Vine and those are very difficult platforms to make money on. I guess so is YouTube, but Okay, so that's that's a little bit of a TikTok thing. Yeah. I saw this other thing. Um, Go we, ahead. We talk about email lists a lot on this show. We right? do. Yeah. Um, the idea being like, hey, own the relationship with the people who are interested in your work, have a direct contact with them, um, 
and you're not kind of beholden to a Twitter or Facebook policy. Um, I saw an interesting thing, um, I mean, maybe a few weeks ago. So I, I, it is, it is a known thing that I like Formula One stuff. I'm a McLaren fan. Yes. And I saw a thing that they have called McLaren Plus. If I told you something called McLaren Plus, what would you think that? that I would is? imagine that they are uh, taking a cue from the fact that their popular reality show uh, was, or that that their participation in the reality show was very, very popular. That they're very sticky. That there are stands you know uh, the based on these racing teams and they are giving exclusive uh subscriber content to those fans they are they're bringing the the using the 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 hype from this thing that they get paid off of question mark, question mark. to uh <laughs> uh come on over here and if you really like uh racer von racerman then okay. then you'll really love his vlog I don't like the Vaughn vlog. It's not a very. It's not. A, it's you're not. You're not. You're not a Vaughn, Vaughn vlog stand. No, he does the. He does the knockout game a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> McLaren, wow, the bad boy of F one. <laughs> well, okay, so that's interesting. That that um, that's interesting. So McLaren Plus uh, does sound like a like a subscription Patreon yep. sort of thing. Yep. That is actually just the name for their email marketing list. It is like they tweet about it it's called mclaren plus all of their things say sign up for mclaren plus and you go to the page and it's very much like this is definitely just an email an email email list and they'll send you a coupon code or something um i mean so really that's i mean geez now we're everything old is new again it's a fan club which is. is what like you know these email lists kind of like now they're they've evolved to be like oh it's just not fa- ew gross fan club who would ever use that term and I, this is me and you bro like we're personally here and you can email me like this is mm-hmm. totally not some impersonal bs bobby soxer fan club yeah but i guess the one thing that would be different is that like sports leagues still do that you and, and like hmm. i know like wwe does that where it's like you some like be on our mailing list and you'll get the, the the pre-sale code before anybody else you'll get the opportunity to buy x packages or y packages or something like that so this is more in line with like a traditional nfl nba uh kind of like sports thing Mm -hmm. when i and i would say uh, the other facet of this is so like i i like mclaren they're my team in formula one yeah but that is not their only who is who is who is the racer for mclaren the Uh, famous racer uh they have lando norris and daniel ricardo that baby lando baby lando baby lando i hear a lot yeah uh, and the australian the big the big kind of jockey australian guy okay um but they have other teams right they have an indie team they have elect an, uh, an electric rally team all these other things and so uh that's the other facet of this is when you sign up for this thing and it's just a free email list you actually pick what leagues you like and i know when i got when i decided like hey i would probably buy another hundred dollar hat i could use another 10 percent off yeah um I was like, hey, you know what? I had been interested in IndyCar, and I actually watched an IndyCar race over the weekend. And so, if 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 this is this is all just a muse, this is all an anecdote of like, yeah. hey, if you're running a thing and you think you've got multiple subcategories or sub brands or leagues, take a look at something like this, where it's just a normal email list, but it's got a checkbox of like, what are the things that you like? And I'm sure that those are tied to different user lists or. Um, uh, you, you know, different collections of like, okay, these are all the formula people. These are the indie people. Um, I would imagine that, that you are, you are essentially signing up for sub lists. Like yeah. McLaren wants everybody's email, right? Because for big things, they're going to hit you up. And if they're doing any kind of merch drop or something like that, doesn't matter whether you're there for the electric rally or the F1 or the Indy car, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you want to do that. What they don't want you to do is hit unsubscribe. Right. So they want you to get exactly what you want. So if you're into IndyCar, but you're not into F1, or if you're into F1, but you're not into IndyCar, which is probably the vast majority of it because F1 is more popular than IndyCar, it seems, mm-hmm. uh, then they don't want you to be like, no, take me off this. Take right. me off all of it. You're, you're already in the right kind of sector. It's self-selecting yeah. even further, which is very valuable, especially when you have, you know, as here like where you have different teams that are in different parts of the world doing different things right the esports team is totally different than any of the physical 
yeah. racing teams. So, um, so that's something that's just interesting. If you if you if you've got if maybe that might be. I, a, I would say clarity of purpose for a mailing list is gigantic. There is a, a guy who's been on the show. He's a very very nice guy, a fantastic writer, Jeff Maurer, who mm -hmm. writes the I Might Be Wrong Substack. Uh, initially, he's a hilarious guy. Go follow him. He, he writes political content. Former writer for Last Week Tonight. Um, great dude. But he initially, because he's also a huge soccer fan, would write extensive, like sports blog level deep dives on the U.S. men's national team and women's national team huh. soccer breakdowns because he loves it. And, and he obviously had a style. He obviously had a bit of a following. And initially, when you subscribe to his thing, you would get both by default. And now he would tell you, hey, if you don't like soccer, go into this panel and click this button click and thing. you won't get soccer. And I was like, well, I don't want to hear your soccer breakdowns, but I also don't want to go to this website and hit this button. So instead, uh, you're just going to make me stub my toe mm -hmm. on this soccer content. And then eventually he smartened up and was like, no, the vast majority of people that are here are here for the political content. So let me just start another soccer blog or something like that. And yeah. and. And go do it. Go do it somewhere else. I don't actually know what he did with that because I don't care about the soccer. The point here is that yeah. if you are not giving me what I want, you are if you're not giving the consumer what you want, then oftentimes the reason why you're doing it is because you're thinking in your head what would be best for you. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, oh, well, maybe more people will read my soccer stuff if it's also coming along with this stuff. And there's not a there's not a hard and fast threshold for that because we've we've done. Things like that, right? When we were launching Modern Rogue, we started that on the Scam Schools channel. And then eventually, yes. that became its own big... But, like, but that if you really content, like magic... That is content that is, yeah, that is way closer together, especially absolutely. considering the demos, uh, uh, than, like, you know, all right, I want left-of-center, comedy-style, political observations, but I also want What's to up? know where in the CONCACAF standings the u.s men's national team and i hope we're doing good in conca calf i think we made the i think we made the we, we made the calf made, we, we, we 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 took the calf we nice. took the calf home uh they, yeah i think i think that we're they didn't uh, hamstring us up yeah we're gonna be in the world cup that takes place like on christmas day exclusively in <laughs> qatar uh, <laughs> oh, in all the uh slave built stadiums oh geez um but 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 there's there's a balance there right because you the whole point of giving people something that they did not ask for is the chance that they may like it. Yeah. Right. That is part of the thing with this email thing. It's like, uh, I hadn't really considered it, but if I was signing up for a thing about F1 and I heard that there's more racing, then yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, so, so just think about that. Think about it. Not in terms of, not just in terms of how can you benefit from the association with something, but also what is it that your, your users want? Like cord killers, right? We do cord killers and spoiler in time. And because those are, kind of different shows, we maintain a bunch of different feeds so you can get exactly what you want. One, the other, or both. I mean, and yeah. And, like, it is a little bit of extra work to do, but it also means that, like, that content is democratized to a certain degree. You pick what you want, we're not going to make you sit through something every week of, of a thing that you don't want. I think that for us... You know, if we're going to largely kind of draw a circle around our 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 Confederate gang of of various different podcasts, uh, if anything, we probably could stand to do more cross promotion because there is such a large shared audience. And so, really? any uh, anybody who listens to PX3 probably would like Court Killers. Anybody would give it a who try. likes court killers probably would like World's Greatest Con, uh, and anybody who likes World's Greatest Con probably would like the Modern Rogue YouTube channel. Like there, there's there's a lot of stuff that uh, I think you know if if we were a more centralized kind of thing that that would be an immediate. If we brought in a CEO that came from another media company, the yeah. first thing they would do is let's draw our org chart and let's understand how we can cross promote and and yeah. build our, our our central uh audience but at the same time if we started a mailing list that promoted all the things and brought you content from stuff like that you would probably want there to be like well do you really just do you want oh, the latest specific things or tv discovery. news 
for that that would would fill you in leading into court killers? Do you want the the political context? Like, but then you, how you do you how do you structure that so that if you might want more than one thing at once, that it makes sense to I not think, just have a million? I think that this marketing. this things would that like uh, you know a self selected like, hey, by the way, we're starting a new newsletter like. From the people that brought you Cord Killers is now the television news newsletter. From the people that brought you PX3, oh, now it's the a new political vertical. newsletter. Oh, I like that. Uh, but And we could plug all of that in an umbrella brand, the Diamond Club emails, yeah. right? Your, your, your Diamond <laughs> sounds, email is shining for you. It sounds like you. a congressional hearing. It does. The Diamond Club emails. The e Diamond Club emails. It sounds, yeah, <laughs> sounds like something even more salacious. Uh but but still, I mean, it, it, we wouldn't want to send you everything. It wouldn't it wouldn't be here's four paragraphs for every show that we do every single day. It would it would be its own thing. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a that's a little bit of after things for you. Uh, we're we're short a few people, so we're keeping it short today. But yeah, uh, just just a couple of things. I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, well, I bet we will probably talk more about world. Is there anything you can tell me by yourself here, Justin, about Greatest Con season two? Any numbers? Is it yeah, good? Is it on. doing good? Yeah, wait. Hold um, on. Uh, World's Greatest Con available now. I can tell you that I've been I've been texting back and forth with my friend Jake, um, because I don't know why, but I only like to text him jokes about foreign relations <laughs> that involve Ti, okay. the rapper, <laughs> the rapper Ti. Yeah. So I texted him this morning. Okay. You know that Ti song. You can have whatever you like. You can have question, whatever you question mark. like. Uh, you think Putin took that seriously? <laughs> I fuck. I hate you. I hate you. I love that. It was a good clap. joke. No, it was, it was a good joke. I really like that <laughs> joke. Anyway, we've been going back and forth joking about Ti and Putin. Uh, I will. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh. Um, we'll see. Yep. As of right now. The season premiere of episode, of uh, season two of World's Greatest Con has, with uh, however many hours left in the day today, Central mm -hmm. Time, surpassed all of our other 24-hour totals as of now. Hey! We have never launched a show with more, uh, more same downloads, day downloads, same day, 24-hour downloads, and okay. we have already crossed that, so we will almost assuredly go even further uh, uh, beyond that. So keep spreading the word. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let, let your friends and family know. Listen to it. I'm very proud of this first, uh, the, the first uh, episode. I think it's a bit of a, it was, it was a challenge conceptually to go from, we, we beat Hitler at the end of the first season and <laughs> saved the world. Yeah. How do you top it? You, you, how, do you, how do you expand? How do you make it bigger and better? I think Brian and I, both have similar, similar uh, brains to 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 be like like no like more right. every time you've done it do the do again more yeah. uh, and so you can't do more than beating Hitler so uh, we 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 changed course gave you a different thing and this is a, an anthology season about game shows I love game about shows. game shows it's and really cool. and and the first one all about uh, the twenty one scandals is something that uh, I don't in our in our research nobody tackled it like like we have in wow. terms of looking at I mean, because by and large the conventional wisdom and you even hear people in the television industry talk about it like this is like a producer gave contestants answers oh sure cheating and it's like Just straight cheating and it's like okay yeah but it's cheat but who is it really cheating sure mm. eventually there are all these consequences the chevrolet's got plenty of money but like whatever like uh, the the contestants got paid they would they made more money than they would otherwise it's not like they rigged the game against them or they took money from them they got money and nobody's really investigated i think the thing that we saw very very clearly and that is that there's a social cost here and mm. and that if you want to know why, you know, as as the first words of the of the episode are, a hundred people walk into a federal uh, grand jury and are told that if they lie, it's federal perjury, and the vast majority of them lie. Why? Yeah. Uh, and and the and ultimately what I what we what we find out is that there is a lot more than money. That, that that goes into that, and especially when we're looking at it in the framework of cons, 
why do you make decisions that you might otherwise in your right mind know is not the best thing for you? Mm -hmm. These are the elements, fame and shame, that I think oftentimes play into it. So, so please go ahead and check that out. Um, there's great stuff. You know, we have four more episodes that are all way longer than season one, and I think are certainly among the best things that I've ever produced. Um, so go ahead and check it out. Uh, that's weekly on Mondays. Monday at midnight. Check it out. World's greatest con wherever podcasts can be downloaded. Yep. Well, that's going to do it here for uh, a little bit of an after things. Thank you, Justin. I'm I'm shooting Bryce. finger guns. It's been after. Okay. Hey, everybody. Good stuff. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, what was that? You went, you, you went, you went on the AC mic. My, uh, that I use that backpack uh, app, the oh, soundboard. Oh, yes. No, sometimes you hit it and it starts <laughs> you hit recording the mic button. It, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And it feeds through so uh that's a little production here we go Words to this. uh we'll be back in a few hours with cord killers it'll just be brian tom and myself check out justin all the great stuff politics 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 and world's greatest con mm -hmm. stuff. have a good rest of your monday everybody see ya Bye.